Alright there boys and girls, welcome back to XCOM, anyone unknown. Now, I have a little bit of a problem here. But, as you see here, if I go and save one of these, which I would really like to go to that one. I'm gonna lose these two cities, oh, two countries, sorry. So, I really, really think it'd be best just to assault the alien base and get it over with. So, here we go, and also, Contores get, oh, Conolingus, sorry, Contores is there. Conolingus became a support, so I do have two support, but they're both really low, lowly. Low, lowly. I can't say that right. Lowly, ranked, and only have one shot of a med kit each. So this might be a bit tight. This mission. We're gonna go in, try our best, see what happens. Let's rip into it. We've got two heavies here. Lieutenant Stroker and Big Clint Torres. So let's rip into it. Hopefully save the world. If not, then I'm well and truly Donald Duck. So let's pick in the assault. Thanks to Dr. Volland's research, it's a big base. It's done in engineering. This skeleton key should allow you to breach the alien compound. We've only got one chance to make this work, though. So let's make sure we do it right. Right. Very kind of head head ish So. Let's rip into it. Oh, stealthy. You'll never see me coming. Contour is here. Leading the way. Contour is at the front. God only knows what they're doing to these people. All the more reason to blow them to hell. Get moving. Right, let's get to what people. So far we don't have visual confirmation on the hostiles. I wouldn't get too comfortable though. We're expecting heavy resistance. They're probably moving into position as we speak. So let's see. There's two alleyways I can kinda of move up. Up here. And up this side. I don't really want to split up my troops. So what we're gonna do? We have Jenny Tull back there. We have Cory Lingus there. Heading to that location. We'll get them all in position. They can I move up. Oh, sprint. Clint there. I see Peter Fell, he can splint, splint, sprint back to here. I need to kind of watch there too because they don't have a lot of health. Big Homer. Big Homer sexual, bring up the rear. Just the way he likes it. Come get some. Overwatch. Let's put all these guys in Overwatch. Yeah. <laughs> Move Willie Stroker. They look all clear for the moment. Do that, Jenny. Jenny Tull. She likes to be stroked, you know, it's one of her turn ons. Jenny Tull always likes to be stroked. A little nibble, a little kiss as well. Now, 
we're gonna move Corny Understood. back there. We'll move Big Homer into the corner. Ten four. Affirmative. Covering now. Put Clint and Scanning. Willie Stroker. I will just put Peter Fell as well. He can go on the Overwatch back there. Oh, there's somebody over there. You hear anything? Oh, do we have it? No, we don't have any movement as yet. Well, it looks like we found where they've been taking the abductees. But that still doesn't explain what the purpose of all this is. Maybe they're trying to make a fucking kill, Dylan. Something you've not yet been able to do. Alright. I'm just gonna... Move up bit by bit. I know, very boring. Roger, Dodger. But, what else is doing? Going very slowly. It does give me a chance to do something. And that, try and drag this series back to what I originally intended to do. That's to talk about things that are happening in the news. That's more than time. And, well, basically, one of the things I wanted to talk about was that, if some of you may remember, the case of the girls that were held captive in America as slaves. There's been another story, this time in London, about three women being held against their will. On my way. Move. Are you there? Now, how the authorities can fail to notice that three people have been missing, it's quite alarming if you consider it. You know, it's, I've not really read too much about the case, so why can I? Talk about it too much, I'm just kind of going off the top of my head here. No sign of nobody yet. Alright, we'll move big. Big Homer, so actually one between two men. Two big heavy men. That's the way Big Homer likes it. What else to do? Put Jenny Tull on Overwatch. Put Connie Lingus on Overwatch as well. Eyes peeled, Commander. Got it covered. We'll move Peter File. Just up a little touch. Yeah, they're definitely they're over there somewhere. Do you hear something? Oh, did they? I wish they would just hurry up and attack me. Get it over with. Okay. No sign of nobody yet. Now, am I gonna have to go all the way fucking back just to go up there? I think I may. Seems I've taken the wrong turn here. Ass. But yeah, to track this story, oh sorry, this series back, I'd like to tell a story. Now, this story, this is also the 50th anniversary of the death of JFK, which I guess, aside from his assassination, He's most famously remembered for the Cuban Missile Crisis. Overwatch. Aye, aye. Which, you know, uh, if you don't know about the Cuban Missile Crisis, I'd, you know, check it out. It's basically, it's... For those that don't know, it's believed to be when America and Russia, or the Soviet Union at that time. I should be able to fucking see them if they're over there. 
came close to nuclear war and the end of the world as the Soviets were putting nuclear weapons on Cuba. Solid copy. And America didn't want them to have nuclear weapons on Cuba because it meant they could actually hit the United States with nuclear weapons. And basically there was a big showdown over that. Kennedy ordered the United States Navy blockade Cuba to stop any more Russian ships getting through with supplies. Russian ships were already on their way and continued towards the blockade. With the United States ships threatening to attack them. If they continued to approach Cuba and get within a certain distance of the island. But there's also another time when the world just came close to nuclear holocaust and annihilation is a little bit less less well known uh, I am kind of doing this, I did do kind of research for this so give me a moment I'll grab my lack of in-depth notes and I will talk to you about it. Now I do remember this, I've seen a documentary on this some time ago and this incident is knowing now this incident took place in I believe it was eighty three. Orders confirmed. Moving out. And basically what had happened is that UNATO was running a communications exercise, basically. And Communication exercise was kind of centered around a nuclear attack. Got it. Moving. Taking a risk here. But just move Jenny Till up as well. Fuck it. Why not? We'll be brave for once. Overwatch. Put Connie on Overwatch. Move Big Willy Stroker. He can't make it all the way up there, so we'll just move him. Up to there. Now, in 1983, as I was saying, NATO were running an operation called Able Archer. Able Archer was a communications exercise that was kind of centered on aye, aye, Commander. a massive Russian attack on Europe. And, you know, it was kind of a communications exercise where they would send, you know, coded messages, so on and so on. But, the Russians, according to some, actually believed that this was NATO preparing for nuclear war. And the reason for this is that two years earlier, the Russians op started an operation, I believe it was two years, called Operation Rhine. Now, Ryan's actually stood for something, but I cannot recall off the top of my head what it meant. But basically, Operation Ryan was that the Soviets were getting so paranoid about, you know, American and NATO countries bulked up. So, they started to actually kind of, they ordered the spies to basically watch for any sign of a nuclear attack happening. You hear that? This included kind of like spying on important buildings and so on, and ordering their spies to count how many lights were left on the building, and so on. It was all this sh stupid stuff. How many cars were parked in the car park at a certain time? And the Soviets were taking this in information, and gathering it, and reading it, and it was due to the paranoia Remember, this was 1983, the Soviet Union was kind of crumbling. Ready, a few years of the Berlin Wall would come down. And they were really, really losing a touch on everything. And all the information they were getting back during Operation Rhine was convincing them that NATO was getting ready to launch a nuclear attack. So, in 1983, when NATO began Operation Able Archer, which was an annual exercise, which had 
This could be dodgy. This could be very dodgy here. Let's move... I'm gonna move you there. Right, nobody there. I think we can risk moving everybody else. Wall there. So 1983, Heading to that location. this NATO exercise was convincing the Russians that the United States, NATO and so on were going to launch a imminent nuclear attack on Russia. And Heading to that location. basically, all the, you know, I believe, don't quote me on this, this is where things get a little bit hazy for me. I really should have taken more in-depth notes doing this, but, you know, fuck it. Sometimes you just gotta go with the flow. And this helps you, you know, it's kind of recording quite a bit today. That's affirmative. Roger. Yeah, everybody on Overwatch. Moving to Overwatch. Can't put on Overwatch. Come get some. Now basically, all the Soviet nuclear, kind of, Installations were put in highest alert, so I told to, you know, uh, NATO was going to launch an imminent attack because Able Archer was sending all this, you know, a huge influx of communication stuff, you know, signals back and forth, and the Russians were intercepting this along with Operation Rhine, which was fueling their paranoia about a Soviet attack, uh, sorry, by a NATO attack on the Soviet Union. And they were convinced that a nuclear attack was imminent. And they told, you know, uh, instructed all their nuclear installations to go on high alert. And one of such stations actually detected what they believed, or what the computer system the Soviets had in place at the time, what they believed to be the launch of a nuclear missile by an American installation. And one man who was in control of that installation. What could they possibly be storing in those tanks? Well basically one man so to be interrupted there, I'm just wondering what the were storing in the tanks. Seemed very important but you know So basically, this Russian nuclear installation detected that, or what they believed to be, an American nuclear strike being launched. And the man in charge of that nuclear installation, Understood. Moving out. having read, you know, having seen the warnings, all the computer, you know, all the, it's 1983, so I, I you know, I use the term computers loosely, plus it's Soviet technology, Commander. was telling him to fire his nuclear missiles at America. Now, this is true, this is a god, Google it, search it if you wish, please do. Scanning. For I cannot remember for the life of me the name of the guy that actually I'm talking about here. Probably Dimitri, oh, most Russians are called Dimitri. Dimitri or Ivan. Oh, we've got contact here. We've got two, uh, took two off. Oh fuck, we've got a lot of contact up here. Kill him, please. Oh yes, lovely. They're trying to pull back. percent chance, go on, go on, who is this? Who the hell is this again? Jenny Tull. Jenny Tull in your face, how could I forget? So anyway. Oh, do I want to move Peter Bell? No, move Willy. Heading there now.
was gonna run it. Go, we're gonna run him. Big Homer, up into the corner. Now, I don't know if there's any guys up here, but we're gonna run them. Oh shit. Shoes. Right, we'll get Willy Stroker. Go on, Willy. Willy misses the target by a million fucking miles. Just happened. You're fucking useless as well. I doubt I'm gonna be able to get a grenade rocket over there. Oh, no. Not far enough. Tell you what we'll do. I'll we'll throw a smoke grenade. In fact, where's my other? Oh, she's fucking over there. That's not good. Is he getting our turn? Yes, he does. I should have pulled him back. Right, we've got problems here. Major fucking problems. I'll throw a smoke grenade over there, cover him. Cover going out. Peter fell covering a Willy Stroker. So, getting back to the issue at hand. Now I can move Clinton. No, no, no. Getting back to the issue at hand, as I was saying. It'll take me some attempts to actually get back to the fucking issue at hand, but you know, doing my best, people, doing my best. Uh, see if we can get this other smoke grenade. Oh, that looked like it covered him, can it? Please, please cover him. Smoke's in the air. That looks like it's doing it. So what we'll do? This sprint. Rolling out. Big Clint up to there. Hopefully that will get him in the smoke as well. Keep him covered. Fingers crossed. He's in overwatch. He's gonna take a shot someday. I'm taking heavy fire over here. He's safe right now, but what's this other guy gonna do? This is the problem. He's gonna fly up. Pop down over there. Ah, that's cool, we're fine. So yeah. This rushing commander of this Russian nuclear installation. The system's telling him to launch his missiles, to bomb America. And what does he do? He ignores it. And why does he ignore when his system's telling him to fire? It's telling him, you need to shoot now and kill these guys before they kill us he ignores the signal. Now the system is telling him to fire, telling him to shoot straight away, don't fuck about, launch missiles. Just like that. And do away with America before they do away with you. And he ignores that signal. Doesn't just ignore it once, he ignores it continuously. As the system tells him more than once, to shoot his missiles. His computer system. What made this guy say, no, I'm not gonna fire? Basically, 
I say that a lot as well, don't I? He's down. The reason he didn't do it. That's affirmative. Don't know if you should move up here, but fuck it, too late. Fuck. The reason why this Russian commander ignored the system's warnings telling him to launch is that the system was only telling him that Americans were launching from one installation. Just one installation was launching its nuclear missiles at Russia. Not two or three or four or five. But one. Now obviously, in hindsight, we know that that wasn't the case. America never launched its nuclear missiles at Russia. So why was I, his signal, why was his system telling him Got it covered. That um, the Americans were launching their missiles. It's because basically, <laughs> I say that again. Yeah, I know. You guys get sick of it. I'm sick of saying it as well. But it's something I'll try and work on. I promise. Confirmed. Closing on target position now. Jenny Tull up here. Affirmative. Connie, any Overwatch? Overwatch. Same with Clint. I will put back home. So what was I saying? I should might take me a minute to actually remember what the fuck I was saying. Yeah. Well, the Russian system for detecting American launches of aye, aye, Commander. nuclear missiles. What in God's name are we looking at? I didn't want to believe it, but it's clear the aliens have been experimenting on the abductees. What could they be hoping to accomplish through this? I don't know, maybe they're trying to make a fucking kettle of human beings. Maybe they want to make a human centipede. Who knows? They're having a so I'm gonna try and build a kettle, I hope they're giving more luck than fucking I am. Let's try and get a cup of tea off these fuckers, it is a nightmare. How so basically... <laughs> say that again. Uh, fuck. Okay. Solid copy. The, Ameri the Russian detection system for nuclear... for the launch of nuclear weapons against them was uh, the satellite system detected heat blooms Rolling you know out. heat signals on the earth Can't get some. and the way that the sunlight had hit the atmosphere of the earth had actually reflected a light beam back at one of the satellites and the place it had actually reflected on was actually above an American nuclear installation Oh, you know, relatively close to it, close enough to it for the system to believe that it was an American nuclear launcher. So, the hence the system told this commander to launch his missiles. And continually, he ignored it. Didn't report to his superiors, just flat out, no, ignored it. And that takes fucking balls. That is balls of steel right there. I don't care what you say, what your opinions of people are. But if you've got a computer system that, you know, you believe is your country's best first line of defense against being totally wiped off the earth, and you ignore it because you think you know better than that, that is fucking balls. That is balls of steel right there. To say, no, this computer system, that's fucking wrong. I mean, we've all had problems with computers. Well, I certainly have. I'm fucking terrible oh, with computers. Done. But, that guy, I forget his name, I really should have checked it up. Please, if somebody knows the name, or, you know, I might even look it up and. Yeah, in fact, yeah, I will look it up and put it in the, the wiki page, at least anyway, where you can go check out and read out the entire story. 
but respect to him, he saved the world. Just think of it. Just consider how close in 1983 we came to the end of the world just because of a the wrong signal at the wrong time. Time to motor. It's amazing. And on that note, I think we're going to end it for this video here. Let's remove this guy up. Let's remove Peto File any place. I think we'll call it a day there. This is 30 minutes long already. Oh fucking hell, they're behind me. Think we're alone out here. Oh, that's bad. If they're behind me, that's bad. <laughs> they are definitely over here somewhere. Probably up this fucking corner here. That's where they'll be. So, but... We'll have to just have to leave it to the next video because this is 30 minutes long now. I hope you've enjoyed it. There's not actually been much happening in this in way of action and excitement, but I hope you enjoyed the Able Archer story. It's a true story, and I would highly recommend checking it out. And I'll also put in the details and a link to the wiki page for you to actually read it yourself. And I hope you enjoyed that story. Thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye.